Hey everybody out there, I want to talk to you today about the LaLaurie Mansion. Now the LaLaurie Mansion is a building located on 1140 Royal Street in New Orleans. Uh, it's famous for being a haunted house and forms part of most of the ghost tours in the city. People need to purchase tickets to be able to get a guided tour of the house, uh, just in, uh, a quick FYI. Anyways, uh, so the story is, goes like this. The original owner of the mansion was Madame LaLaurie, who was alleged to have brutally tortured her slaves in the mansion. Uh, she's often referred to as the cruel mistress of the haunted house. Uh, it is alleged that the ghosts of these tortured slaves are the ones that haunt the mansion. So that begs the question, right? Who was this Madame LaLaurie? Well, Madame LaLaurie was born as Marie Delphine McCarthy on March 19th, 1787 to Marie Jean Larabelle and Louise Chevalier Barthélemy de McCarthy. And sorry if I'm botching those names. Uh, Marie Delphine belonged to the McCarthy clan, which was big, uh, politically connected, very wealthy. Uh, her family members were planners, uh, military offers, officers, huge real estate uh, owners, slave owners, um, and merchants, of course. Uh, they had arrived in America during the early period of the French colonization. And as per legend, uh, the patriarch of the family had fled to France from Ireland to escape religious and political tyranny of the English monarchs. Uh, the baptismal record of Delphine was not noted in the register until about five years after she was born. Uh, it is believed that the Catholic Church generally did this when the child was near death, so that kind of made you wonder. Uh, Delphine was married about uh, three times. First marriage was to Don Ramon de Lopez y Angulo in about 1800. He died on his way to Spain, so, you know, whatever in that. Uh, his second marriage, her second marriage was to Jean Blanc in about 1808. Uh, the couple had four children, and then Jean died in 1816. Her third marriage was to a chiropractor physician uh, named Leonard Louis Nicolas Lalaurie in 1825. Laurie had come from France to treat her daughter. Uh, she was several years senior to him, but Louis had impregnated her and had, you know, had to marry her because those were how it was back then. Uh, Delphine purchased the 1140 Royal Street property in about 1831, and the couple moved there with their children. Now, theirs was, however, a very unhappy marriage, and profuse arguments between the two were repeatedly overheard by the neighbors, and subsequently in 1834, Louise left Delphine, as to be expected. Uh, after Louise left her, Delphine had a mental breakdown, down, and this allegedly led her to harm, abuse, and torture her slaves. Now, in 1833, a young slave named Leah fell and died in the courtyard. After that, Delphine was investigated by authorities, and all her slaves then were freed. Delphine purchased all her slaves back, and all was quiet in the house until the fire of 1834, which is now known as the LaLaurie Mansion Fire. So on April 10, 1834, this fire erupted at the opulent LaLaurie Mansion. This fire damaged half the house and also led to the discovery of seven slaves who were tortured, starved, and chained in the upper sections of the mansion. They were taken to the Cabido, where the medical treatment, you know, drinks, things like that, food, they were all given to them so they can get their sustenance. Huge crowd, uh, though, of almost 200 locals had gathered to witness the plight of these slaves. Uh, they were so horrified, actually, by the scenes that when the sheriff did not take any action for the entire day, they became a mob and attacked the house. Madame Lullery had managed to escape before this mob fury, however. Uh, the crowd did destroy, though, what remained of the house and took all the valuables. So the fire had started in the kitchen, allegedly by a slave woman who was chained to the stove. It seemed that she ignited the fire to bring light to her and her fellow slaves' deplorable state of life. So... There are many stories of, of slave torture within the LaLaurie Mansion, and most of these stories have been told about the haunted house were based on the state of the slaves who were found in the mansion after the fire had been extinguished. One story, for example, is about a slave with a hole that was drilled into uh, the slave's head. A wooden spoon was then inserted in that hole. Another story is about a slave whose bones were broken several times and then set in abnormal positions. Ouch. Uh, thus, when that slave was moved, uh, her limbs stayed bent and crooked, uh, giving her a crab-like gait, which is just creepy to even think about. Another story is about a slave whose intestines were removed and then twisted around the naked abdomen. Uh, another slave was allegedly found with the skin peeled off the back, therefore you know, making the muscle and tissue, tissue visible to the naked eye. And there have also even been stories about slaves being covered in honey and then later attacked by ants. So true torture indeed. Now reports indicate that most of these stories of the LaLaurie Mansion were over the top and exaggerated. Uh, their origins can be traced back to the commentaries and books written after the fire, with the most ghastly, ghastly ones being in the 1946 book The Haunted House of the Rue Royale, written by Jeanne de la Vigne. Uh, most local newspapers at times had reported about the poor condition uh, that the slaves were kept in, but there was no mention of torture. Uh, the only paper that actually mentioned uh, the torture of slaves being done in, uh, as a 
medical experiment was the New Orleans Bee. Uh, the informant of this paper was Monsieur Montiel, a neighbor who was repeatedly spurned, actually, by Madame Lowry, uh, Lallery after making advances to her for many years. So, hence, he may have spread those whole stories uh, about activities in Lallery Mansion, you know, to get back at her, whatever the case may be. So it does make you ask, what is the truth, right? It, well, it is true that a city lawyer did visit Madame Lalaurie to inform her about the slave laws and warn her about the treatment of the slaves. This means that she may have been cruel to her slaves. However, the horror stories of holes being drawn in the heads, etc., probably not true. Uh, Delphi returned to France after the fire. Uh, she died under very mysterious circumstances, and as per records in France, uh, her death date is December 7th, 1849. Now, this is where it gets interesting, because the stories about the paranormal and ghostly activities in the Lalaurie Mansion have been circulating for nearly 200 years. Some have reported moaning sounds emanating from the slave room. Uh, some have stated that they uh, actually felt as they were captured by some kind of negative energy when touring the mansion, while some others have reported hearing phantom footsteps. Actor Nicholas Cage actually bought the property in 2009, but lost it soon after due to a foreclosure uh, thanks to bankruptcy that he had endured. Uh, the current owner of the mansion is actually an oil magnate uh, from Texas who had been living there since about 2012-2013. Um, supposedly no major problems. Uh, the tour itself uh, of the Lalaurie Mansion, it's private property. It's not kind of open for a tour. Uh, people can see the mansion from the outside, basically. So the only tours available are the ghost tours, where you can walk along the sidewalk outside as a guide tells you about the Lalaurie Mansion and Delphi and Lalaurie's story. So hey, if that's interesting to you, check it out. Uh, and there you go. Thank you, guys. Take care.